Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Elizabeth Manning and thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we have for you today. Claiborne County officials are investigating a homicide that happened Monday afternoon. The Claiborne County Sheriff's Office received a call at 612 about a shooting that happened near 834 Leach Medley Road in the Speedwell community. The release states that upon arrival, the officers identified the shotgun victim as 53-year-old Zachary Scott Dick. So far, the investigation has revealed that 47-year-old Hank Austin Williams allegedly shot Dick with a 12-gauge shotgun. Williams went into custody without incident and is being held at the Claiborne County Jail. Williams is currently waiting for his bond to be set. Department of Justice representatives were in Knoxville on Tuesday to talk about the funding of a pilot program to track opioid fraud. The Eastern District of Tennessee and the Eastern District of Kentucky were two of the 12 districts selected out of the 94 total in the United States to participate. According to U.S. Attorney Nancy Stollard-Harr, statistics show that Tennessee is one of the most highly opioid addicted states in the, in the country, while our current assistant U.S. Attorney have already made tremendous efforts towards combating opioid-related health care fraud in the district, the U.S. Attorney Office is pleased to receive these additional re resources. The Eastern District of Tennessee will receive funding for a U.S. Attorney who will serve a three-year term and focus on investigating and prosecuting opioid cases. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. Fire on the Mountain will be August 11th at 7 p.m. at Camp Jubilee, located at 3316 Owen Ridge, Owen Ridge Road in Tazewell. C.C. Mills will be speaking, and there will be music by the Higher Ground Baptist Church Choir and Orchestra. Meet the Jackets will be on August 12th at 6.30 p.m. at Bradner Stadium. There will be food, a silent auction, cake auction, teas, team introduction, and more. Tennessee Highway Patrol will be having driver's license roadside safety checkpoints now through August 12th on State Routes 32, 33, 63, 345, and Cave Springs Road in, in Claiborne County. Indian Creek Baptist Church will hold their monthly singing on August 13th at 6 p.m. The singing will feature the Glory Road Boys. Everyone is welcome. The Springdale Volunteer Fire Department will be having its annual car, truck, tractor, and motorcycle show on August 19th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Springdale Elementary School. Admission to the public is free. There will be an entry fee of $15 for each vehicle. Vendors can set up a booth for, 15, for a $15 fee. All profits go to the Springdale Volunteer Fire Department. For more information, call Doug Rolfson at 423-438-1787. That's a look at the LMU Community TV calendar, but stay with us as coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will let you know about high school football previews and more in sports here on LMU Community TV News. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? Like great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. 
continues our preseason coverage of the upcoming 2017 high school football season, a campaign that for some will get underway in just over one week. It's time for the next squad in the tri-state area to grab the spotlight ahead of the hotly anticipated opening kickoff at the end of the month. After highlighting a variety of different teams from around the states of Tennessee and Virginia, we continue Kentucky's coverage on the gridiron with the Bobcats of Bell County High School. BCHS will be looking to build off their moderately successful 2016 campaign in which the Bobcats amassed four total wins on the year next to eight losses and a trip to the second round of the postseason playoffs. Although Bell County was able to grab key victories over Middlesboro, Pike County Central and Jackson County, the Bobcats simply couldn't provide enough W's to counter their regular season L's. And although BCHS showed a sudden burst in the opening round of the 2016 postseason, outscoring Breathitt County in a shootout, the Bobcats were eventually stuck stomped by the Corbin Redhounds, ending the season on a bit of a sour note. As far as 2017 is concerned, however, Bell County enters this fall with the highest of expectations. As this offseason, it was announced that legendary Bobcat head coach Dudley Hilton was returning to the team that brought him so much success in his illustrious career. In Hilton's 40 plus years on the sideline, he has amassed 361 total wins and three state championships, two with Bell County in 1991 and 2008. At the time of Hilton's previous departure, from the Bobcats, Hilton held the title as the winningest coach in the history of Kentucky high school football. And although that record has since been surpassed, the hype at BCHS is now at a fever pitch thanks to the offseason hiring of Dudley Hilton. LMU Community TV had a chance to catch up with Coach Hilton at a local event, discussing his feelings on returning to the school that brought him a tremendous amount of success. Well, you know, you, you, you always, uh, when you leave uh, Bell County, you always miss it. I always kind of draw you back. So this will be my third time coming back. Uh, hopefully it'll be my last time, but who knows. But uh, it, it is really good to be back uh, on the mountain there in Bell County. Dudley Hilton then spoke about a 2017 preview for his return to Bell County High. Well, you know, we, we're not going to change a whole lot as far as uh, our offense. We're going to be a full house backfield team and, uh, you know, got a couple good looking quarterbacks. And, a little hurting on the line a little bit, but uh, got a lot of kids are willing to work. Got a lot, got a lot of pride and tradition at Bell County, and I hope we haven't lost that. I hope uh, they still got big hearts when they go out on the field. Our defense is uh, uh, struggling a little bit. We lost a few kids from last year that I think was pretty good players, but again, uh, I hope we're playing with that big heart and, and uh, you know can uh, get after people. So uh, only time will tell. Just see. Uh, if, first, if they haven't really forgot the uh, rich tradition that we had over for many years. And finally, Coach Hilton discussed the ultimate goal for the Bobcats once the 2017 campaign officially draws to a close. I've never been a big goal setter. I've always tried to win the first game because that's, you know, and then you go from there. So, so I never said you have to do this or have to do that. But, you know, we're, we're hoping that, uh, you know, that we're as played as many games as we can down to the end. And, and I've been fortunate enough that uh, in the three years, or out of my 40, 42 years, that we have ended with a win by winning the state championship. But they don't come very often, and, and hopefully you know that that's going to be a dream of all of our kids over at Bell County, and hopefully we'll go to the limit, which would be 15 games. But right now, we're just trying to win one game, and if we get beat, we'll try to win it the next week. So, uh, you know, that's, that's always kind of been my goal. In one of the most anticipated contests of football ever at Bell County High School, the Yellow Jackets of Middlesboro will attempt to spoil the long-awaited return of Coach Hilton on August the 18th before BCHS hosts their second straight opponent at home, Letcher County Central, the following weekend. Three consecutive road trips to Pike County Central, Whitley County, and McCreary Central will spell an early season challenge for the Bobcats as Bell County returns home on September the 29th to host Casey County. It will then be back and forth road trips from the road and back to home to ride out the 2017 season's end as the Bobcats travel to Clay County on October the 6th before returning to BCHS on October the 13th, welcoming the same team that ousted Bell County from the postseason one year ago, the Red Hounds of Corbin. The final road trip of 2017 will commence seven days later at Jackson County before the Bobcats head back to their home field to wrap up the regular season on October the 27th, facing off against Harlan County. 2017 marks the beginning of a new era at Bell County High School as Dudley Hilton and the Bobcats look to make a splash this coming fall. 
The Tennessee Smokies have just concluded a five-game homestand versus the Blue Wahoos of Pensacola, a series that almost entirely gravitated in the hometown club's favor as Tennessee emerged as the victors of the five-game set four games to one ahead of their next road trip on Thursday. The Smokies began the series against Pensacola having just escaped a five-game road trip to Jackson, facing off against the Generals in a meeting of back-and-forth Ws for either team, eventually tipping towards the visitors from Tennessee, with the Smokies coming out on top for good three games to two. The last time a five-game set was held from Smoky Stadium, it was a crushing series for the visiting squad. As the Montgomery Biscuits traveled to Kodak nearly two weeks ago and demolished Tennessee from the opening pitch of Game 1 all the way through the final pitch of Game 5. That domination would send the Smokies on a downward spiral, slumping into a season-low six-game losing streak, further plunging down the Southern League North standings. Although Tennessee gained a minor victory in Jackson, escaping the Generals by one outing, there were still loads of work yet to be done and the Smokies were aware of that fact, determined to climb back to the top of the divisional standings by notching three straight victories over Pensacola, breaking the dry spell of winless play in the previous home stand. Although it wasn't easy in Game 1 last Friday from Kodak, the Smokies withstood a late Blue Wahoo run to come away with a one-run W by the score of 5-4 to four before gaining a much more convincing triumph the following day, taking care of Pensacola 6-2. to two. Sunday's Game 3 from Smoky Stadium provided another one-run finish in dramatic fashion as an early 5 to nothing advantage gained by the Blue Wahoos turned into six consecutive runs brought home by Tennessee, notching one of the biggest comebacks of the 2017 season, while at the same time clinching the five-game series with three victories in a row. The scheduled Game 4 meeting on Monday was postponed due to rain in Kodak, and so a doubleheader was in order 24 hours later, with Pensacola gaining the upper hand the with the first W on the day, but the Smokies would have the last laugh, ending the series on a high note with their fourth victory over the Blue Wahoos in five games. In the first contest of two on Tuesday, it was all Pensacola in the shortened seven-inning matchup as the visitors posted a 5 to nothing triumph, shutting out the Smokies while slowly and methodically picking up five scores along the way. Although the Blue Wahoos couldn't gain the series victory, they were still competing at a high level, determined to make the most out of the road trip. Tennessee bounced back later in the day, in the day however, recording a 2-1 to one W at home, their fourth of the series and the third by only one run. Both squads posted one run apiece in the third inning, but before the tie-breaking score was brought home by the Smokies in the bottom of the fifth period, making way for their fifth victory in six total games. After successfully ousting the Blue Wahoos of Pensacola four times in a tightly contested battle, Tennessee will enjoy a day off on this Wednesday before heading back to the road on Thursday for a five-game set with the Biloxi Shuckers. The Smokies are slowly but surely making their way back near the top of the standings in the Southern League North with a 24-21 and overall record in the second half of the 2017 campaign, which is two games behind the Montgomery Biscuits for the second place position and eight games back from the league leading Chattanooga Lookouts. The Smokies will await the opening pitch in game one from Biloxi on Thursday at approximately 7.35 p.m. before game two will get underway the following day at the same start time. To find out if Tennessee can get off on the right foot against the Shuckers to attempt to gain their third consecutive series victory, you can head over to www.smokiesbaseball.com. As the 2017 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series resumes this coming Sunday for the Pure Michigan 400 at the Michigan International Speedway, it was announced on Monday that Casey Kane, the latest victor of the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis just over two weeks ago, snapping a 102 race winless skid for the driver's first victory of 2017, will not be returning to Hendrick Motorsports in the 2018 season. At the time of the announcement of Kane's parting ways with the team, a replacement for the driver had not yet been named. That has now changed as 19 19-year-old Xfinity Series rookie William Byron will be the man to take over Kane's position with Hendrick Motorsports. Byron has won three races in the Xfinity Series after taking part in one season in the Truck Series, in which the 19-year-old crossed the checkered flag first seven times. Byron will have big shoes to fill in 2018, as Kane's accomplishments include a four-time Coca-Cola 600 champion, in addition to becoming the 2004 Rookie of the Year. Kane currently holds the 12th place position in the chase for the Cup standings, following his victory at the Brickyard for with 14 races left to go in the Monster Energy Cup Series. The green flag from Michigan will wave on Sunday at 3 p.m. on NBC Sports Network. And that is all for sports so far this week, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is on the way right after this.
apples and bananas. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Elizabeth Manning, and have a great evening.